Thank you, Lexi. The past few years have been overwhelming for many people across the United States, from the COVID-19 health crisis to natural disasters in our communities. With the country in the midst of economic recovery, you may be wondering, how can we help those in need after a natural disaster? Thomas Ty joins us now to help answer that question. Thank you much, so much for joining us today, Thomas Ty. I'll have you start by telling us a little bit. You know, we've dealt with hurricanes, uh, wildfires, earthquakes, COVID-19. How can people help others that are in need after a natural disaster? Well, thanks for having me, Maya. And, you know, I, I think you've encountered all those um, and probably then some, I think, as many of us have. I think the, you know, it's been an interesting time uh, just given all of the historic events from beginning with the pandemic, but also the two worst wildfire seasons and hurricane seasons in a row. So I think it's important the uh, government plays a big role in these things, but the local groups uh, and national groups that are nonprofits that play a complementary role do an important role. And I think uh, we've been called into action more in the past few years than ever before. So it's uh, been a critical time and a tough time given all the external events happening, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's great that you're focusing on this activity because this is a time of year when people start thinking about charitable giving as well. Definitely, that's kind of what the holiday season is all about. So how can, uh, how have nonprofits been able to continue helping those in need during this time of recovery from COVID-19? I think all organizations and nonprofits including have had to make huge adjustments to the new realities the way we interacted with each other, uh, you know, changed. I think the economy changed, the circumstances changed. So I think the, the mission of nonprofits is what attracts people to work there and uh, why they're founded. So I think that's great motivation to keep trying to figure out how these important things can be done, but done differently. So that's been true for nonprofits as it has been for schools and every other type of business. Um, and that's allowed and it's been a tough road for, for many organizations, but I think overall, despite the challenges, they're committed to keep leaning and going forward. Definitely. And, you know, what advice do you have for those who may have disaster fatigue or feel overwhelmed by the news of a natural disaster from the past? Well, you're not alone uh, if you're feeling that disaster fatigue. I think we all probably should rationally have some of it because every night, there's something horrible that we learn about that uh, hasn't happened before, whether it's a pandemic in 100 years or that you know, we ran through the alphabet twice for hurricanes. And I, I'm in California where, you know, the state almost burns to a crisp every summer. So there's, yeah. a, there's a reason for those feelings. But, you know, it's important to just take a breath and it can always be worse. It directly works in a lot of places where it is worse even now. And so I think there's a lot to be thankful for despite the challenges and to kind of take some comfort in that and that'll keep it going forward and you know i'm not a psychologist but i think we've certainly found that uh, the service to others and kind of thinking outside of that bubble one it may be in is always helpful to get a broader perspective and a different one awesome and you know for those who are wanting to maybe help with some of these natural disasters can you share some tips on how someone can choose a charity wisely I think, you know, choosing charity uh, and making a charitable contribution if people are able to do that, it's a very personal choice and it's not mandatory. It's a wonderful gesture. And I think what no one else can do for you is to decide what you care about. So you have to begin with what speaks to your heart. And if it's arts or environment or animals or, you know, humanitarian health services, um, start there. But then, you know, take some time and see which organization is legitimate, has a good track record, and you can do that by looking at uh, websites like charitynavigator.org or Charity Watch, and these are independent uh, organizations that exist to kind of provide objective information so people aren't played by, uh, have their emotions played by solicitations so that they can make a, an informed choice about something they care about. And let's start with what you care about speak to you know what speaks to you and then follow your head too and, and make a well-informed choice well thank you so much thomas for coming in and telling us a little bit about this and hopefully our viewers at home can now make a wise choice with choosing a charity that maybe they can donate to this holiday season thank you maya my pleasure